My friends, I bring greetings to you from Jerusalem, our eternal, undivided capital. And I also bring to you news that you may not have heard. You see, I'll be speaking in Congress tomorrow. You know, never has so much been written about a speech that hasn't been given. <laughs> and I'm not going to speak today about the content of that speech, but I do want to say a few words about the purpose of that speech. First, let me clarify what is not the purpose of that speech. My speech is not intended to show any disrespect to President Obama or the esteemed office that he holds, I have great respect for both. I deeply appreciate all that President Obama has done for Israel, security cooperation, intelligence sharing, supported the UN, and much more, some things that I, as Prime Minister of Israel, cannot even divulge to you because it remains in the realm of the confidences that are kept between an American president and an Israeli Prime Minister. I am deeply grateful for this support, and so should you be. My speech is also not intended to inject Israel into the American partisan debate. An important reason why our alliance has grown stronger, decade after decade, is that it has been championed by both parties, and so it must remain. Both Democratic and Republican presidents have worked together with friends from both sides of the aisle in Congress to strengthen Israel and our alliance between our two countries. And working together, they've provided Israel with generous military assistance and missile defense spending. We've seen how important that is just last summer. Working together, they've made Israel the first free trade partner of America 30 years ago and its first official strategic partner last year. They've backed Israel in defending itself at war and in our efforts to achieve a durable peace with our neighbors. Working together has made Israel stronger. Working together has made our alliance stronger. And that's why the last thing that anyone who cares about Israel, the last thing that I would want, is for Israel to become a partisan issue. And I regret that some people have misperceived my visit here this week as doing that. Israel has always been a bipartisan issue. Israel should always remain a bipartisan issue. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of my address to Congress tomorrow is to speak up about a potential deal with Iran that could threaten the survival of Israel. Iran is the foremost state sponsor of terrorism in the world. Look at that graph. Look at that map that you see on the wall. It shows Iran training, arming, dispatching terrorists, on five continents. Iran envelops the entire world 
with its tentacles of terror. This is what Iran is doing now without nuclear weapons. Imagine what Iran would do with nuclear weapons. And this same Iran vows to annihilate Israel. If it develops nuclear weapons, it would have the means to achieve that goal. We must not let that happen. And as Prime Minister of Israel, I have a moral obligation to speak up in the face of these dangers while there's still time to avert them. For 2,000 years, my people, the Jewish people, were stateless, defenseless, voiceless. We were utterly powerless against our enemies who swore to destroy us. We suffered relentless persecution and horrific attacks. We could never speak in our own behalf, and we could not defend ourselves. Well, no more. No more. The days when the Jewish people are passive in the face of threats to annihilate us, those days are over.